The government has responded positively on biotechnological plants to be developed in Indonesia to meet the need for national food supply. However, it is expected that Indonesia will soon be able to develop its own biotechnology and not be depending on any international companies. Deputy Minister of Agriculture Bayu Krishnamurti in a meeting on Global Perspective on Biotech Plants explained that to date, Indonesia has been importing agriculture goods from genetic engineering such as soybean and corn. He considered that the percentage ranges from 80 to 90 percent for soybean products. Therefore, he added that it is the time for the government to apply this transgenic technology since 148 million hectares of land across the globe have been planting genetically modified organisms since 2010. However, Banyu Krishnamurti reminded the government that we should not just depend on several companies or countries. Meanwhile, Director on the International Service for the Acquisition of Agri-Biotech Applications, or ISAAA, Clive James, said that during the 50 years of commercialism from 1966 to 2010, the total size of land with biotech plants had reached 1 billion hectares around the globe. And in today's Talking Point segment, English news reporter Harris Mann talks to a biotechnology expert, Dr. Cliff James, to discuss on the importance Hello, good evening. Thank you for being with us in the English News Service, now in the Talking Point segment. Today we will talk about biotechnology for the developing countries and also globally. Now today we have Mr. Dr. Clive James, the founder and the director of the International Service for the Acquisitions of Agri Biotech Application, or ISA. A not for profit international organization that gathers and shares information about the use and the impacts of biotechnology in agriculture. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for being with us today. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Dr. James, first we would like to know how does the implementation and the use of biotechnology in developing countries nowadays? If we look at uh, the global hectares of biotech crops that were grown in 2010, it's almost 150 million hectares. In fact, to be precise, it's 148 million hectares. And since 1996, when the first crop was commercialized, we have accumulated more than 1 billion hectares. Now, that's a very large number. What is it? It's approximately five times the total land area of Indonesia. Very large area in a relatively short period of time. And in 2010, the increase from 2009 was um, equivalent to 14 million hectares. 48% of 40%. the 148 million hectares were grown in developing countries. And it is certain that within the next two years, developing countries will actually grow more than industrial countries. So developing countries have a lot to gain from using this technology, including a country like Indonesia. So why do we need uh, biotechnology for the agriculture? If you look at the population of uh, Indonesia today, it's about 238 million. That will increase to 285 million by 2050. That means that you'll need more, um, uh, more food, more feed, more fiber, because that's a significant increase. And also you will have some uh, changes in diet maybe, more meat, more chicken. Uh, and of course, in order to provide those, um, that, uh, um, I an increase in number of chickens, you will need more feed. That means more corn, maize, yeah. more soybean. And uh, Indonesia today is already importing something like three and a half million tons of soybean and a million tons of corn. As the price of these crops go up, and what we've seen 
is an escalation in the prices of these crops, then it makes sense for Indonesia to produce as much as you can on Indonesian soil. This means that uh, you'll be able to cut down on imports and increase your self-sufficiency. So it's a win-win situation all the way around. So what do you think that Indonesia should prepare for this biotechnology in agriculture? The first thing is regulation. This technology is very heavily regulated. But in the last 15 years, we've gained a lot of experience about the regulations. So now what you can do is you can make simpler regulation that is more cost effective and time effective so that you don't, want, don't have to wait too long for delivery of the product. The opportunity cost therefore uh, is decreased and Indonesia will gain from that. Um, the other uh, important area is to train your own people. Indonesia already has um, scientists of world class in biotechnology and whereas you might have to purchase your, per your first products in the long run your people will be able to develop their own products. Yeah, but uh, also we have uh, some opinions about biotechnology some are supporting and some are not. Uh, some critics say that uh, the biotechnology especially the outer plants uh, cause environmental harm in many ways. What are you saying about this? When you introduce any new technology, there are always, uh, there's always the possibility that you will have non-intended effects, effects that you didn't know about. But happily, over the last 15 years, we have been able to look at this technology very carefully. We asked the question in 1996, what may be the risks associated with this technology? We now have a solid body of scientific evidence in support of the technology that the foods that you produce from these crops are as safe as conventional technology. There is no zero risk in biology. It's important to note that. Also, these crops make a contribution to the environment, mm. to sustainability. So what we see today is a, um, a world that has come to be familiar with this technology. Yeah. It is safe. For example, corn would be a very important crop for Indonesia. You import a million tons now, that will increase as population increases. And also the sugar cane. That's right, sugar cane is a, uh, is a very important product for the future for countries like Indonesia, for countries like Brazil in particular, the largest grower of sugar cane in the world, and of course that can be used for ethanol. So I can assure you that from a scientific point of view, these crops are now safe. They deliver significant um, benefits, and if Indonesia does not use it, then it ceases to have the opportunity. It is disadvantaged versus other countries that are using this technology. Indeed, I think we can say quite confidently that the biggest risk associated with biotech crops for Indonesia is not to use them. Yeah, okay. But uh, you've traveled around the world, especially in uh, America and United States and also in other part of America. What countries do you uh, think that implements this biotechnology successfully than the other countries? You have 29 countries that are growing the technology in 2010. And remarkably, 19 out of the 29 are developing countries, like Indonesia. When this technology was introduced in 1996, some of the critics of the technology said, this is a technology for the industrial countries, for the large farmers, not for the developing countries, and not for poor resource farmers. In fact, the opposite is true. What we see in 2010 is that um, two-thirds of the number of countries growing this technology are developing countries. And of the 15.4 million farmers that grew this technology in 2010, remarkably 90% of them, 9 out of 10 of them, were resource-poor farmers in developing countries. Now this then offers the opportunity that in fact not only can you increase the food feed and fiber for small farmers such as you have in Indonesia, but you can also make a contribution to the alleviation of their poverty. It's a fact 
that 70% of the poorest people in the world are in agriculture. Many people believe that to be a problem. We think it's an opportunity because now we know that when you apply this technology at the small farmer level, there are very significant gains. So you're able to increase income, provide food security, and alleviate poverty. Very, very important achievements. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Clive James, for the information, and thank you for being with us tonight. It's a pleasure. I hope that by the time that I come back to Indonesia in 2012, that you'll be growing your first biotech crop. Thank you. We hope so. Well, that's all our uh, talking point for this evening with Dr. Clive James. Thank you for being with us, and we're back to the studio. Mm -hmm.